welcome to All Things Policy, a daily podcast supported by Pragati, a flagship media initiative of the Takshashila Institution. We're a bunch of policy nerds based in Bengaluru, and we like to bring a fresh perspective to Indian affairs and an Indian perspective to global affairs. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us for today's chat. Hello and welcome to another episode of All Things Policy. My name is Arjun. And today we're going to talk about a survey conducted on gene editing in the US. So today's guest with me is Priyal, who is also a research analyst at the Takshila Institution. Hi, Priyal. Welcome to the episode. Hi, Arjun. Nice to be here. Yeah. So as I said, today we want to talk about gene editing and the survey which was recently conducted by the Pew Research Center on gene editing itself. So let's get into the episode and uh, let's talk about what exactly is the survey and what is the content of it itself. So uh, Priya, can you just give us a brief overview about what this uh, gene editing survey was about and what were the main questions which were asked in the survey to the respondents? Right. So the broad idea about this survey was the fact that the conversation about gene editing has been happening in bits and pieces in and around. But um, in general, what the research center wanted to do was to get better understanding of the public opinion on gene editing, as well as like broader social, ethical, as well as the policy implications which lie ahead for us, right? If gene editing becomes like a widespread technology that is available worldwide. So that was the broad idea behind it. And the basically when the questions that were asked on the survey were about gender of the person, as well as like their religious commitment and whether this correlated to certain other points of gene editing, like would they accept gene editing if it involved changing a baby's intelligence? Would they be okay with gene editing if it meant that it could repair some of the genetic conditions associated in the child? Uh, Such questions Mm -hmm. were what was asked and then they sort of try to correlate these factors like gender and religious commitments as well as like their educational level, etc. with these kind of questions. Okay, so if I understand like clearly, it's more or less trying to get a view on different people's opinions on what extent does gene editing, you know, is kind of okay yeah. and, and wh- where it is not okay yeah. and how and yeah, so they, they just give a bunch of different scenarios and uh, ask what kind of scenario requires gene editing and it might be okay to do gene editing in that and what are the scenarios which also require gene editing, but it's not okay to do it. Something like that. Exactly. So like, I think when it comes to, if you are like, whether, for example, if you are extremely committed to your religion and you're given a scenario where genetic gene editing is required, or would you be acceptable to this particular condition right now? What is one would be that, for example, if they give you three scenarios, like, would you be okay with gene editing if condition one uh, meant that it could change the child's intelligence or increase the child's intelligence? Second would be to make sure that the child doesn't suffer from any genetic disorder in the future. Such scenarios if they give and then you sort of draw a parallel as to whether how much does it correlate, whether their religious commitments has anything to do with it. Similar scenarios with their level of education or such questions with their genders, all of these kind of variables that they've tried to map it out. But basically to get uh, a a broad opinion about people standing on what gene editing means for them and how much, where do they draw the line between what is ethical and what is not ethical, what is acceptable to them and what is not acceptable to them. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. And if I am right, this survey was conducted in America on the American public itself, right? So what were the views of the American public on gene editing based on the religious commitments and gender and the fact that scientific knowledge has a major role in the you know responses to these survey so what kind of role did scientific knowledge also had to play in it and yeah I mean considering the fact that you said that religion and gender and all these were 
major parts of the survey so what was the views and how did it diverge across the American right public? so here we'll be talking about basically this question that you're asking basic uh, wants me to talk about religion gender as well as the level of scientific knowledge right with respect to their views on gene editing so I'll start with the giving the overall with these three factors. Okay, so basically there was a large difference in acceptance of gene editing between like highly religious people and less religious people, and uh, there was also gender gap in the views about gene editing with women less accepting to gene editing than men, and people with the higher levels of scientific knowledge and. you know additionally even people who are highly familiar with the technology of gene editing also tend to be more accepting of gene editing as the technology now if i were to go deeper into all these three factors now americans who are like you know high in religious commitment that is like people who attend religious services weekly or have their do their prayers every day and say that religion is very important in their lives are less inclined than those with like medium or low levels of religious commitment to say that gene editing is an appropriate use of medical technology now if i were to give you an example those who are like high in religious commitment are uh, closely divided over whether it is appropriate to use gene editing to reduce baby's risk of disease later in life now 46% of people who are very religious say that it is appropriate whereas 53% of the religious people highly religious people consider it taking this technology too far now in contrast now nearly 73% of the people who are, have low religious commitments say that gene editing to reduce the baby's risk of developing a serious disease or a condition is an appropriate use of medical technology and while 57% majority of those in high religious commitments say gene editing to treat a congenital disorder in a baby is appropriate use of medical technology nearly 82% of people who are less religious say that it is appropriate now those with the high levels of religiosity also stand out when considering the possibility that you know to develop the gene editing it might also require people to do testing on human embryos okay so now 87% of the people who were highly religious say that it is taking medical technology too far whereas just 11% of that group says that it is quite appropriate 55% of the people who are low in religious commitment say that if this developing gene editing technology requires you to test on um, human embryos then it is appropriate use of medical technology now when it comes to gender like i said before right women tend to be more or less inclined to the gene editing rather than men and uh, nearly 65% of men believe that gene editing to reduce a baby's risk of developing a serious disease later in life is an appropriate use of medical technology when compared to 54% of women and 76% men are more supportive of using gene editing uh, to treat a congenital disorder whereas only 68% of women were keen on using gene editing to treat what do you say treat a congenital disorder now similarly people with high scientific knowledge also sort of view gene editing in a positive light nearly 86% of people with the uh, high scientific knowledge believe it is an appropriate use of gene editing to treat congenital uh, disorder compared to 58% of people who had low scientific knowledge and uh, 71% of people with high scientific knowledge say that it is appropriate to use gene editing to reduce a baby's um, risk of disease that would occur later in life whereas 49% of the people with low scientific knowledge believe that it is appropriate so yeah and also one more thing that i've noted in the survey is that if you've known about gene editing technology previously or you've sort of like used genetic testing in your family or something those people are more positive towards the gene editing technology than people who've never sort of heard about the technology at all so yeah this is like the broad and deeper 
or this thing about what exact where do Americans stand when it comes to their religious commitments, the gender as well as their scientific knowledge bit. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of unpack right here, right? So um, in terms of religion. And in terms of scientific knowledge, it makes more sense. Like people who are more inclined towards religion will kind of not embrace new technology, and especially when it deals with life and deals with biology itself. Right. And that makes more sense. And even in terms of scientific knowledge, the fact that when you're more scientifically aware, you're more yeah. like you know you know what's happening around you. You understand the technology better. Exactly. You can the nuances better so you you will take an informed decision but one thing that was very interesting for me from you know from the results of the survey itself was that the gender parity and the gender difference and in the response to the survey right, right? so i still i'm trying to wrap my head around the fact that why women have been less inclined towards gene editing technology is it just the fact that they are the ones who are childbearing and they think that this might have an impact on the child itself or I don't know like it's something that fascinates me that men are okay with this kind of technology being used more than the women and generally for a mother it would seem more like if they if you know if there's a chance or a possibility that her child might be saved from you know genetic disease okay. you and you can use a certain kind of technology to kind of uh, you know use that to uh, mitigate the effect of the disease itself they would go for it yeah. but i mean clearly this shows that uh, we we might not be i mean that might not be the case and the, the gender differences surprisingly even actually even i was surprised when i read this report right because my assumption was also leaning towards the fact that women might be more accepting of gene editing when mm-hmm. compared to men and i think it was mainly yeah. because of the fact that ki as a mother you might be more keen on making sure that your baby doesn't suffer through congenital disorders in the future and everything but i think mm-hmm. somewhere and i don't know the reason behind why so many of american women large majority of women who've taken the survey say that they are not as keen as men right and uh, it would be great mm-hmm. if there are further i mean qualitative studies as to why this particular thing uh, happened or what is the idea or what was the reasoning behind them not being so accepting towards it but yeah as of now the survey just gives like absolute numbers and if there is further studies happening on it on but this is something i think even if given a chance i would also like to study more because i my clearly yeah, my definitely. assumptions or my idea was i was completely wrong when i was reading the survey yeah so let's take a small break and we'll be right back and delve more into this survey and what uh, what lessons it has for india so we'll be right back welcome back to the episode we were talking about gene editing and the recent survey which was conducted by the pew research center uh, on the american public regarding gene editing and the ethics of gene editing itself so priya one thing is the fact that ever since you know gene editing technology was has come out into the public or at least the public discourse there have been a lot of arguments made for and against gene right. editing itself so you have the positive implications where it can be used to track genetic diseases mutations yeah. and actually mitigate them and help save more lives and there's also this negative implication of you know the concept of designer babies and how the rich might exploit this kind of technology to you know bring up babies or like design their own right. you know features and characteristics for their children now i'm pretty sure everyone has their own opinion on it but like in specifically in terms of this survey itself right since it was conducted in america and te- i mean we know that uh, the us is one of the technologically yeah. advanced countries in the world so what are the views of the american public itself like I mean, I'm pretty sure there will be nuances in terms of the fact mm-hmm. that yeah, we talked about how religion, scientific temper, and all matters. But in general discourse, uh, what is the overall view of the American public? How uh, like is are they leaning towards the positives of gene editing, or are they leaning towards the negatives? Right. So, based uh, just purely based on the outcomes of this survey, 
Americans are more likely to anticipate negative effects rather than the positive effects for gene editing. And okay. uh, specifically, around 58% of uh, Americans believe that gene editing will very likely lead to increased inequality, mainly because it will only be available to the wealthy people. And uh, around 54% of the American public anticipate a very slippery slope in the sense that um, they're mostly like, even if gene editing is kind of used appropriately in some cases, uh, others will use it inappropriately, right? Like it's some might use it for their benefit, some might use it for like absolute chaos of it. And uh, 46% of the people expect it is very likely that gene editing technologies will be used before we fully understand how they affect people's health. Now, very small share of people see positive outcomes as very likely if gene editing for babies were to become widely available. Nearly 18% of the Americans say it is very likely that the development of these techniques will sort of pave the path for new medical advances that might benefit the society as a whole. Uh, another 42% of the population says that um, it is fairly likely to occur, while 38% consider this as like something that will never happen at all. Uh, like it may not lead to paving the path for new technologies. And just around 16% of uh, the survey takers see the widespread use of gene editing would likely to help people live longer and better lives. And uh, around 46% of the people are like unsure of whether it would increase the quality of life or life expectancy. They are very unsure. They are on both the sides. They are like, it might go this way or it might go that way. And uh, 34% of the people say that it is not possible at all. Like this gene editing may not, will definitely not lead to, you know, better Positive, life yeah. conditions. Yeah, exactly. Okay. How I mentioned in the previously, right, women were less inclined towards gene editing, even if it meant that babies would not develop congenital disorders and stuff. Here also, women were, were more inclined to expect negative effects of gene editing if it becomes available worldwide when compared to men. Okay. Now, for example, larger shares of women than men uh, say that this technology will lead to increase in inequality as it will only be available for the wealthy. Like almost 63% of women say that it is very likely when compared to just 52% of men who say that it is very likely. And 57% uh, of women say that it will be used in a very morally unacceptable ways. And only minorities of uh, men and women see like positive effects. But men are still more inclined to anticipate positive effects when compared to women. Now, expectations also sort of vary when we talk about their familiarity with gene editing. Now, those who have heard a lot about gene editing to change a baby's genetic characteristics are more inclined to anticipate positive outcomes from its like widespread use. And so around 36% of this group who knew a lot about gene editing think it is very likely that, what do you say, the advancement of gene editing would pave the path for newer medical advances or technologies that are beneficial to the society as a whole when compared to nearly 16% of the people who've heard nothing about gene editing at all. Now, also, the people who are more familiar with gene editing, right, they also anticipate downsides. Nearly 64% of the people say that it is very likely that the widespread availability of gene editing will increase inequality because previously with other groups as well, right, they think that this will primarily be available for the wealthy people and uh, Nearly 65% of people who have heard a lot about gene editing think that it is very likely that the others will use these techniques in morally unacceptable ways. Only while 54% of the people who've heard very little or nothing about gene editing uh, say that it might be used morally unacceptable ways. 
now people with like a greater scientific knowledge also say that uh, they anticipate the positive uh, outcomes of gene editing but they also think that um, there are also like equally negative effects that are there when it comes to widespread availability of gene editing so it's kind of like they're very 50-50 on it they know that there is positives but they understand that there's a sig- there might be significant number of people who might use it for morally unethical or like shady thing yeah i mean that's a given considering any kind of new technology itself and i guess the uh, survey kind of maybe accurately depicts that uh one thing before we end right so we know that this kind of this gene editing technology is something that is already here and it's accessible right and from what i have read especially i have read the book code breaker by walter isaacson and which kind of gives a overview of uh, the history of gene editing and all that and they show that this kind of technology is not that expensive in terms of uh, the usage itself like the crispr tool can be bought for around right. like 20 dollars that can be used by anyone itself so this kind of technology penetrating into other countries is a possibility and india in an indian society which with uh, what i 1.3 billion people is this technology can have major repercussions and major effects on on the right. population itself yeah. so um has there been any kind of survey like this which has been conducted on the indian public itself and you know because this obviously i need to conduct such a survey and what is your opinion like i know you have worked on stem cell research you have worked on wet lab research in when you were part of isc and stuff so right. so you you would understand this kind of technology better and uh, how would indians probably react to you know genetic technologies being accessible and available to kind of utilize for i i don't know let's say either the positive or the negative yeah so obviously like i believe that these kind of surveys are very important to understand where the public stands when it comes to these new and upcoming and emerging technologies right especially when you know that in a few years they're going to penetrate uh, the society in such a way that a lot of people might end up using it right so at a very nascent stages of like the development of technology itself if you get opinions of people from like people who know the technology too well to people who don't know anything about the technology hearing their opinions would actually help us sort of navigate the space better and also understand where we as a country stand and then would help us sort of design policies better you know or spread the information and awareness about the positives and the negatives of the technology better and that's something we should definitely do also which is why like based on this research itself at takshashila shambhavi and i we designed a similar survey for gene editing to understand where indian public's perceptions on gene editing lie i will attach the link to the survey with this podcast so anybody who is listening to it please do fill in the survey form so that we will have a better idea about where indian pe- public stands when it comes to gene editing right so that would actually help us better because i personally think we need to have such sort of quantitative data as well to sort of understand these technologies and how in the future we can sort of navigate these technologies and the policies around these technologies better definitely thanks for that so we'll just put that in the show notes and uh, all the listeners please do take it up i mean it is important for as researchers to gauge what exactly you know the public is and their perceptions on these kind of new technologies like gene editing and it'll help us you know craft better policies uh, for the future so yeah yeah thank you so much Definitely. priyal um it was it's, it was a pleasure talking to you i hope to see you in the Thanks, next episode Arjun. and thank you for all yes. the listeners for tuning in see you guys yeah hopefully the next episode would be about the reports of the survey that we conducted yeah, right yeah, about yeah. the indian perception uh, yeah everything. so hopefully we can talk about that in the up and coming episodes once we have like a lot large amount of responses to the survey so yeah, yeah. let's hope so thank you priya and see you guys in the next episode. yeah thanks arjun Bye-bye. thank you so much 
If you liked our show, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can tune into them on the IVM podcast app, ivmpodcast.com, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also follow IVM on social media. The handle is at IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And hey, if you'd like to dive into Takshashila's research on technology, strategy, and economic affairs, check us out at our Twitter handle at Takshashila INST or our website takshashila.org.in.